You're listening to the A to Z of Spirituality by Divine Soul Yolandi Bosso. I work with light workers and star seeds who are ready to transform their lives and shine. I will be covering loads of topics relating to spiritual growth and I will teach you what I have learned on my own journey so far. A journey of connecting with my sacred Mary Magdalene sisterhood, my cosmic lineage, my earth ancestors, sacred sites around the world and my own divine soul. So, if you are ready for some profound ideas and deep spiritual connection, make sure you join me today. Grab a cuppa and let's shine. Hi there, this is Yolandi from Divine Soul. And today we are speaking about intuition. So I is for intuition. And I do apologize that I haven't been here for quite a while, but writing the book has taken up a lot of energy and time. But I'm back now and i um, happy to jump back into my podcast and spend some more time on here with you. So I wanted to speak about intuition today. And this is really one of the things that I get asked about probably the most by people all the time. And it is about everyone wants to connect with their intuition, right? They want to be psychic and they want to know stuff and see stuff and feel stuff and all that good stuff. Um, and I think for me, it was always kind of have a bit of intuition envy. <laughs> so I want to demystify a few things today in our conversation. And I want to talk a bit about what intuition really is. So what, what does it mean to me and how have I kind of figured it out for myself and started working with it? So the biggest thing about intuition is obviously for me is about trusting myself. And when I started investigating intuition and looking into it, and I, I write a bit about this in my new book that's coming out as well, I really came to the conclusion that as a society and as a people, we have been conditioned to be disconnected from our intuition. Okay, so I mean, that's quite a bold statement. But here's my here's my rational, here's my thinking. So at one stage during our history, we, we were fabulous, we were connected with nature, we were kind of feeling into everything, we trusted what came up in our bodies, etc. And then there was a shift of power and power structures came into play, putting things into a hierarchy came into play and people were basically told that they couldn't connect with the energy of the divine or couldn't connect with the energies out there without going through someone else. So you would have to go through a priest or you would have to go through a priestess or you would have to go through a shaman or you would have to go through someone always. But I look at it this way, our God-given right, our most basic part of being human is the fact that we are energetically connected to everything and to everyone out there, right? So if you go back in time and you think about like your Akashic records and all of that type of stuff, it's all energy, right? You and me being able to sit in a room and I'm able to feel you or connect with your energy, that's all energy. So our bodies are like literally designed to connect with energy because we have the ability to walk into a room and go, oh my goodness, this feels unsafe, right? These are like basic instincts. There's like nothing weird about that. That's literally how this little body dropped onto this earth. It's made to feel stuff all the freaking time. It's made to connect with energy all the time. But at some stage, we were conditioned to say, no, 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 you can't feel. You have to ask me to tell you how things should be. You are not allowed to feel for yourself. You're not allowed to think for yourself um, because that takes away your power, right? So that's my take on this whole business. So I was thinking, so how do I reverse engineer this concept then? And it was all about me basically starting to connect with my body and using my body to reconnect with energy. And then when I reconnect with energy, I'm reconnecting with my intuition. Okay. So I know this is a mouthful, but the basic premise is that our body is connected to all of the energy out there, everything, and we can use it to tune in 
and listen or feel or see whatever it is for you, right? So I hope that makes sense. And I want to speak a little bit more about the different senses and how we can use them. Okay, so if you start with your body, and I'm going to go through a few of the types of intuitive um, clairs. Okay, so clairs, obviously, it's a, a, a French word, and there's all these different clair senses. So I'm going to explain to you a few of them, and then you can start tuning into what you think or what you feel or what you perceive to be something that you might want to explore within yourself. Okay, so <laughs> basically, if this was ever told to you in the time of the witches, you'd be burnt at the stake because this means you can take your power back. This means you can start seeing things and start connecting with things because you're connecting with your clairs. Okay, so let's talk about what the clairs are. Okay, so clairvoyance. Now, this is the most um, well-known one and also a, a very elusive one. Um, and for me, this took me probably the longest of all of my clear senses to um, really connect with. And it took a lot of practice and a hell of a lot of trust for me to connect with clairvoyance. So clairvoyance is our ability to see, okay? So this shows up for different people in different ways. Um, obviously, if you're a, bo a born clairvoyant, um, you will just immediately have sight and you'll be able to see things um, when you connect with energy. Um, now, for someone like me who, who is not a born clairvoyant, I had to, to basically practice and start trusting the flashes and the visions and the colors that I started seeing, okay? Um, first, for me, it wasn't obvious that this meant something because I think the movies have sort of distorted the whole idea of clairvoyance and you need to be able to see dead people walking around and spirit and and different things around you but when you're starting with your clairvoyance it doesn't have to be that okay when you're starting to tune into your clairvoyance it's more about a picture showing up or something that you see when you, you know behind your eyes and I always say I'm one of those clairvoyants um, clairvoyant people who I close my eyes and then I can see so I see behind my eyes because I kind of made a pact with my guides and I said I don't want to see all these things that you're showing me because they just freak me out and I seriously don't have the energy to deal with this so when I started seeing like um, passed over ancestors and stuff next to my bed I was just like nope I can't deal with this take it away I'm not interested um, so obviously then my guides accordingly said, no, that's fine. So now I, when I close my eyes and I work with the client, I can see stuff behind my eyes. So I will see the visions inside my head with my eyes closed, right? So I have like a movie playing. So that's clairvoyance. But when it starts, it's about being able to have like a flash or you just see something, you know, like there's just like a moment of clarity, basically that you have that comes in in a vision to you so that is clairvoyance so then the next one that you get is clear cognizance so that's the ability to know so this one was my very first clear that that presented itself to me and it's a feeling okay it's a feeling inside you and you know stuff without knowing how you know things um, so it's, it's, it starts as a gut feeling. So it is very often, um, uh, so I know this is true. Like I've just got this hunch inside of me and it, it is there. And like, I just know it's true. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but think back that sometimes when you are, you know, presented with something and you can go, oh, this, I know this is utter nonsense. Or I know this is really true. And it's just this feeling like it's so hard to explain, but it's almost like it takes over my whole body. And it's just like, I know, I know that I know this. I know that this is true. And I know this is my truth. So this is the one that I um, worked with a lot in the beginning when I started my journey, um, because I would just I would see things um, like say I would read stuff or whatever, and I would know that it's true. Um, I would really tune into my body and when I asked a question my body would just respond with a yes or a no okay so you'll hear me very often when I'm when I'm um, talking to people and and 
uh, about like how to connect with your intuitive senses. It is about like what feels open in your body or what feels closed. That for me is the the essence of clear cognizance. Okay, it's like when my when my full body, when the whole bodily experience is like open, and like and it it's just a knowing, right? It's like this open knowingness within my body. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> okay. The next one is clear sentience. Okay. So clear sentience is the ability to feel in your body, but this for me is more of a, a physical feel. Um, so where clear, clear cognizance is like a, a knowing feel and clear sentience is a physical actual thing that happens with you. So clear sentience is of, um, often, you know, when you speak to someone and you get goosies, like you get goosebumps all over your body. Um, for me, when I get goosebumps, when I speak to someone, I'm like, that's the truth. Okay, for me, goosebumps and truth goes hand in hand. Um, when you are, when I'm connecting with a client, for instance, and all of a sudden I start and my throat's feeling really sore or I start coughing or whatever, then I have a feeling because I'm connecting with their energy about the fact that they might have a problem with their throat chakra. So I use my body very often when I do readings for people, because when I think about someone, I might get a pain in my womb, or I might get like my leg is sore, or my back is really sore, whatever. So that's my clear sentience that comes up. And that is the feeling that I get when I'm connecting with someone's energy. Okay, but that's also like the feeling when I walk into a room, and there's danger or whatever, like my body picks up on it. Okay, so it's a very clear feeling in my body. Okay, so that's the next one. Clear audience is the ability to hear. Okay, so for me, this very often shows up as a ringing in my ears. And when I, often when I speak to people and I'm giving messages or I'm busy typing a message, then I'll get this like high pitch ring in my ear. And it's almost like that's the way that my guides go, this is the truth, tell them this. Like you need to take note of what was just said or this is really important, right? So I'm forever walking around with this weird ring that goes off in my ear. And it's, it's not an ongoing thing. So I know it's not, um, what's it called, tinnitus. I know it's not that because it's just like every now and again, there's just like one and then it disappears. The other thing with clear audience, which I quite love, is my guides often when I get into the car and I switch on the radio, there'll be a song on the radio that immediately speaks to something that I've been wondering about. So for me, um, that's like kind of like how my guides show up often is they talk to me through songs, right? And then I'll listen to a song and the words will just absolutely resonate and answer my question that I might have had today. So I think one of the misconceptions that people have about about intuition is they waiting for some dude to go, Yolande, listen to me, like a big booming godlike voice to appear. But that's not how it works, okay? It's all about us tuning into these bodily sensations and functions and starting to trust them. Okay. So that that is like like really, really important. It's it's like I think <laughs> Hollywood is just messed up um, the whole idea behind intuition, because they painted a completely different picture to what the actual experience is actually like. Okay, so then one of the other things um, is, oh, I hope I can pronounce this right, clear gustins. Okay, so that's the ability to taste. So this happens sometimes when I am working with people and all of a sudden you'll go, oh, something tastes like oranges or, um, you know, it might be... Um, like you will taste like a, the, the one time I had like tiramisu came up and I was like, I'm tasting tiramisu. What's this all about? And the person obviously started laughing like, oh, no, no, this is the story behind the tiramisu. So sometimes what happens is that um, the energy that we connect with in that person, that's the one way that they can relate to a message that we're going to give them. Right. So that's really important as well. So sometimes when you taste things, when you're speaking to people and you're not actually eating it, pay attention because there's a message there. Ask them, why am I tasting this when I'm hanging out with you? What's going on? Okay, so the other one is clear salience. So that is the ability to smell. So like with the other ones, um, there is certain aromas that remind us of people as well. Okay, so Say that you had a grandfather used to smoke a pipe. You might end up like smelling smoke. 
or for me um i sometimes like i'll smell like jasmine or i'll smell rosemary or whatever and very often these are actually oils that my clients work with or that they need to work with etc so those things are all important um but again all of the stuff that i've just spoken about all comes back to these are body things that i notice because i am in awareness and i'm in the moment okay so especially when i work with my clients and we're working with the intuitive side of things I'm very alert and aware of what is happening in my body when I connect with someone else's energy. I'm very aware and alert when I'm sitting meditating in the mornings to see what is happening in my body. What am I seeing? What am I feeling? What am I knowing? What am I experiencing? When I ask a question and I get quiet, what is my body saying to me? Okay, so all of these things are again it's a bit like riding a bike and i know i go on and on about this but the only way you get better at listening to your body is by making time to listen to your body so constantly making time in your day to sit and to feel and being in constant awareness out of your mind and in your body okay so when you are busy interacting with people when you are going about your daily life etc be aware of what your body is doing. So for me, what's recently been happening is I will be, I'll be watching TV and then all of a sudden my leg will jump or my arm will just like make a sudden movement and I'll be like, okay, what's this about? And it's literally like my body is going, pay attention to whatever was said there or pay attention to whatever you read there or pay attention to what just happened. It's almost like my body is involuntary <laughs> like takeovers are happening because it's like boom you laddie like pay attention okay so for me as much as i want intuition to be something that magically appears it's something that magically has to be worked on okay when i started on my journey 10 years ago i was the most disconnected from my body i'd ever been and i know my mom she's always had such a strong intuition and i was always like i wish i could be like her and my husband had a really amazing intuition as well and they would just be like that one's dodgy don't invest in that don't do this do that but they would just know right and i was always in awe of this until i started realizing all they're doing is they're listening to what their bodies are telling them and how they are feeling within themselves when they are connecting with certain situations and i mean they're not even um like you know my husband he says he's a science person so he doesn't even see himself as being spiritual even though i think he's super spiritual but like he will just go i'm listening to my body and that's obvious okay so for me it wasn't obvious and i assume if you're listening to this it doesn't feel that obvious to you as well but these things are like so important and you just have to keep on practicing and the more you do this the better you get at it so for me my intuition is Currently, it's my superpower, but I have spent years and years and years practicing, learning, trying again, seeing if I can do this. How does that work? What's my body doing? How am I responding? So it, for me, it's an ongoing project and it's, it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger every single day. So I'm going to ask you to take some time to start tuning into what is it that your body is actually trying to tell you? So as much as you want to become intuitive and as much as you want to do all this, start here, start today, start by listening to your body and by feeling what is it that it wants to say to you, because your body is connected to your soul, okay? Your soul speaks to you through your body in more ways than you can imagine. And um, all of those, those functions, and there's, there's a few others as well, I just don't know all of them, but these are the main ones that I work with. Um, but all of these things are so important, right? Um, and it's all connected to energy. And at the end of the day, when I am feeling into a situation or I'm feeling into a person, I'm connecting with energy. And my body can tell me if that energy is good or bad. My body can give me the answers that I need so that I know that I should be proceeding with something. If something doesn't feel good, don't do it. If there's something within you that feels uncomfortable, it is your body, your soul speaking to you going, don't go down that road. Don't connect with that person. Don't do that project. Don't buy this. Don't go there. Don't invest this. 
I mean, they, it's just, <laughs> you have to start listening, right? And for me, that is how we reconnect with our intuition. And that's what intuition is all about for me. It's all about the body. So I want you to just take a few moments with me now as we're coming to the end of the podcast and just take a deep breath in and close your eyes for me as we sat here together now. And just allow yourself to start at your crown. Let's do a little bit of a what I call a body scan. Okay. So what we're going to do is I want you to ask a question that you are wondering about. Okay. And we're going to do it a very simple, it needs to be a yes, no question. Okay. So I want you to ask this question. This is our intention. And this is how you can start playing with your intuition. So ask this question. And I want you to also be very clear with yourself whilst we're doing this, that whatever the first answer or feeling that you get, whatever that is, I don't want you to rationalize it out of existence, okay? I don't want you to come in with a, ooh, maybe I imagined that, blah, 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 okay? The whole point about working with your intuition is about learning to trust yourself learning to trust your instincts and your responses and not try and like rationalize them and use your brain and your mind to help you out here. Okay. They are really about trusting what your soul slash body is trying to tell you. Okay. So we're going to start at the top. I want you to repeat the question in your head. So whatever your yes, no question is, I want you to just tune into that. Say it gently to yourself set that as your intention so now we're going to take three deep breaths in so we're going to take a deep breath in and hold and out and now you're going to take the second breath in and as you take this breath in as it fills your lungs and you breathe out for the second time i want you to feel how you're kind of dropping into your body so imagine yourself like you're pulling all of your consciousness into your body so so imagine if your mind was out there somewhere and you were thinking about what to buy for dinner tonight or some work that you needed to do just bring all of it in okay so with the third breath we're going to take a deep breath in and hold it and pull all of the bits of you back into your body into this moment right here and out again and just feel yourself solidly in your body right now so your mind's not somewhere else. You're present with me here. Connect with your breath. Just allow yourself to breathe in and breathe out. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is you're going to start at the top, at your crown and the top of your head, and just imagine yourself doing a little scan. So imagine your eyes just running over your body now and just doing a little scan seeing if there's any part of your body as you go past your eyes, see how that feels. Is there anything there that you perceive to be a little bit dark or maybe heavy? Anything in your throat that feels a little bit heavy? As you go down, how's your heart feeling? How's your lungs? Can you breathe properly? How's your body talking to you right now? What's your stomach saying to you? How's your womb doing? How's your root and your legs? How's that? So when you're, as you're sat where you are sat, how does that feel for you? And just give yourself a minute or two just to feel your body. Just be with your body now. And just see what's where. How's everything feeling? Is it feeling light? Is it feeling heavy? Are there a few places that's a little bit uncomfortable? Not exactly where it needs to be right now. Okay, so we just take a few more breaths. Okay. So, I want you to ask your yes no question right now. And then immediately tune into your body and feel what it feels like, wherever that may be. Is there a flash? Is there a voice? Is there a knowing? Is there a feeling? Okay. If the feeling feels constricted and sore and painful, that's a no. If you feel like you're in a warm bath and everything is fabulous and all expansive and open, 
that's a yes. It might have been that the word yes flashed into your head right now. It might have been that the word no flashed into your head. It might have been that you heard something. It might have been that you sensed something. It might have been that you just know that the answer is yes or no. Okay? So I want you to take whatever it is that you experience now to answer your own question and start playing with this, okay? So in the next few days, as there are questions arising or things that you're needing to figure out, start connecting with your body. Get yourself into that space of first calming yourself down, really getting into the space of relaxing, and then start asking your questions, okay? So this is so much fun. <laughs> the best thing in the world, I promise you. Like your intuition is rock solid awesome. Right. Okay. So I'm so happy I was here today again recording. And um, I hope you are going to have a beautiful, beautiful day further. And I will be back um, with Jay in a couple of weeks. So I think Jay's going to be for judgment because that feels like something we need to speak about. Um, so that's going to be fun and watch out for <laughs> more information about my book coming soon. I'm so excited for that. And, um, yeah, I'm still here. If you need anything from me, remember divinesoul.me is my website. I'm always open for sessions and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you.